Greetings my friends, how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. I hope you're having an awesome day. So the first thing you're thinking is Zed, my God, do you look rough. I know. Just woken up very early on a Sunday morning and uh, you can see the camp behind us. And I stay with my good buddy Paul Adamson. Uh, it was a bitterly cold night last night. Went down to just below freezing. Literally just woken up, hence why I look like the way I do. My apologies if I've damaged your eyes. Uh, now with Paul in the north of England, in the county of Derbyshire near the Peak District, beautiful part of the country. And um, I'm here to spend a couple of days with Paul, uh, learning bark craft and uh, cooks are carving, as you do. And so this is the Sunday morning, I've been there since yesterday morning. And uh, I'm not recording the actual wild camping part of it, although I have done a couple of tutorials. So I'm not sure what order I'm gonna put these videos out. So if they're already out, then obviously I'll put the link below in the description, you can go check those out. But right now, I thought I'd bring you along. I want to test the knife, and most importantly, breakfast. So here we are, my good buddy Paul. You're making your coffee, aren't you? Yeah, some fresh co cowboy coffee. So just a couple of scoops in there, two full scoops, and then that'll do two big cups. So no, when you say cowboy coffee, not that as in Brokeback Mountain. No, no, just um, done in a billy or a, or a can or whatever. Right. And then, um, yeah, you don't filter it or anything, so you keep all the flavour and all the caffeine. <laughs> so what you then do, you just put the water straight in, don't you? Yeah, put some hot water in, and then I'll get that on the fire and boil it up in there. Right. So it's, it's good and frothy, and then uh, just leave it to, for all the grounds to settle to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then just pour it out straight into your handmade cookser. Anyway, to drink coffee. That's it, man. Are we going to be like meerkats after drinking this? Yep, definitely. This will keep you going. This will. You know, I had coffee for a while then. No, it's been quite a while. I've never been a coffee drinker, you know. Yeah. I've probably upset half my audience just, by saying that. You're going to be running around the woods like a scared deer or something now. Yeah, I know. It's going to make you go crazy. Even out the deer is going to be scared of me. <laughs> So my friends, no breakfast is complete, especially on a cold morning without a bannock. And Paul, the delightful cook and chef. I've heard some great things about your cooking this day. You reckon? Yeah. yeah. Man's got to eat. A man's um, got to do what a man's got to do. That's right. So, um, I haven't actually made one of these for about five years. So, <laughs> we'll learn. Um, Have you noticed how Paul's getting the disclaimer out of the way first? Yeah, then? just in case it completely goes pear shaped. But, it's not, I mean, there's loads of different ways of, people call it bannock, but it, it, it could be um, basically bread, pastry, or cake, and you right. just add more things to it to, to make the desired product. And we just need a breaded, tasty thing this morning. So it's basically just flour, water, and um, some fruit. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of milk in, That's just it. to react with the baking powder. Right. This is an acidic um, solution, so. More bubbles, more more lift, and um, you know you kind of get the same effect as you would with yeast. Because even a little bit of flour goes a long way, doesn't it? With it does, yeah, and um, yeah, it's extremely filling, and um, I don't need quite the same amount of calories as I used to when I was younger. <laughs> but you're still only 21, aren't you, though, Paul? You reckon? Yeah. I wish I was. That's what you tell the ladies, though. Isn't it? <laughs> So you, you mix the dry stuff first then? Yeah, get it all in there. It's all going to soak up the, the water, so at least you know that you've got the right consistency. Right. 
Right, um, so the trick is not to put too much in in one go, and then right. you don't get a big sticky mess. And always have a bit of spare flour for um, for sort of um, absorbing it all off your hands and off the the, the bottom of the right. thing. And if a few dead bugs get in there, it's just a bit of extra protein. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's all about foraging, isn't it? Living off the land. We'll see a bit of glass in Certainly there. not bringing anything at all from home. We wouldn't dream of doing that. <laughs> Friends, I cannot tell you how what a beautiful morning it is. The weather's been atrocious the past, past couple of weeks, isn't it? Storms and quite high winds and whatnot. Especially in this part of the country. Yeah, it was atrocious on the week leading up to this. But, um, yeah, what a change of it, sunshine that day. It's getting a bit sticky now. So I think that might start holding together and forming a, a ball of dough. You're always getting a bit of a mess, but you know, as you don't get it everywhere, you're fine. And this is a swanky little stove you made, what, from an ammo box, isn't it? Paul? Yeah, it's just an old rocket um, container and um, yeah, it's off the ground, it's just, there's already four holes in the corners when you get them anyway. Right. So you just have to get some threaded nuts and um, bolts and it's off the ground. You can dry your wood as well as protect the ground at the same time, that's what we're doing now. Interesting. Because there's bluebells coming up and what have you. And then um, baking trays just fit straight on top with a gap for feeding the wood in. And there's just a, a little letterbox cut in the side just to let in some extra um, air when you need it. bit sticky so this is why you have a bit of spare flour. I make it quite a dry product really. Um, when you're making cake it's probably better to, to make it like a liquid really. And um, You know baking is something I really want to get into now. Yeah. Outdoors yeah I've not done enough of it. Yeah I mean when I'm at home I make a lot of bread you know yeasted bread and um, you know, everybody loves it it gets, goes you know just gets you eaten up straight away the same day. This is a bit of a treat for me. The reason why I've not been making it so much is that uh, I've not been eating bread for the last um, year or so. Um, everybody else eats it when I make it. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just my age. So here's a lid pull. Oh, so they can proceed and mist in. These are awesome. So there you go. Yep. So what you've done now, you put some flour at the bottom. Yep. And um, I've not seen this technique before. So you just put flour at the bottom, just basically prevents it from sticking. Yeah, it stops it sticking. This will go brown and a bit smoky. Nice. That's a nice flavour. Uh, stops this sticking to that, and it also means you don't have to use oil. And um, it's a bit healthier as well. Right. And it's just just a nice way of baking. So just pop that on top of there. Put a lid on. And you've got a little oven. And then we'll put that over some embers that we've been uh, saving. So I'm just going to check the heat. It's a bit too fierce there. You want the coolest heat you can get out of your embers really to start it off. It wants long and slow. That's what she said. Yeah. She says a lot, doesn't she? She does. So while the bannock is cooking, I want to test out a knife a very, very kind subscriber sent over to me, Jesper Christensen. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Up and coming knife maker from Denmark, and he hand forged this himself, made the leather sheath too, and it's an absolute beauty. So, this is smoked oak, the handle with leather liner. This is 012 still, hand forged, I think it's four mil thick, full tank. And it's an absolute beauty. I think it's got iron pins as well. So he's hand forged it himself. He's an up and coming knife maker. Um, and he sent him strictly for the purposes of just testing it out, giving him some feedback. He's been a really good supporter of the channel. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's test this bad boy out. So here we got Paul testing out Jesper's knife. He's got a lot more experience than I have with this. That's sharp then, huh? Yeah, doing the trick. There we go. Yeah. And you fashioned the mallet as well for a bit of uh, battening testing, huh? We have. I'll uh, 
get onto that now. It's quite cool the way you've done that actually. I've not seen that approach to creating a mallet. It's really, really rough and ready, but um, holding onto that, it, it just feels all awkward and you don't get so as much force. So you just force. literally just axe that out, didn't you? So just axe it out and you just, you can squeeze up, you can really whip, whip it out and get a bit more yeah, power. Yeah, that's very cool, I like that. So just see what it's like for battening, eh? Nothing wrong with that. So we'll make a feather stick, I think. So that was half. That's quarter. These are eight. You can do a little twist to save them to go all the way through. So that's got typically a straight grain, hasn't it? Yeah, sweet chestnut. I mean, it looks quite exciting what we're doing now, but it's basically because the wood's working in our favour. It's, it's lovely and straight, and it just loves to split as much as it likes to spit when you burn it. Um, but it's beautiful stuff to work with. It smells amazing too. It's absolutely rammed full of tannin. So it split ran off there. Often happens. That's the forehand grip. Seems to be doing that quite nicely. To get some curls. So um, we're just batting off the outside, or attempt to anyway, because it doesn't always work. Yeah, so I'll just. So why would you typically do that then? Well, you know, the whole point of feather sticks is it's a fire lighting method if everything's completely soaking wet and you've got sharp tools. So you can obtain dry wood and then manufacture it into thin shavings, small pieces of wood, medium sized pieces of wood, thicker pieces of wood. So removing the, the, uh, the bark, you basically take away the moisture? Yeah, it? yeah, that's the idea. Okay, I'm you not... take off as much as you need to take off. Um, this is if you're doing it for real, we're just playing around on a nice sunny day, but I wouldn't need to do it, you see, because I know it's dry. Right. But yeah, that's that's the that's if you're doing it properly. Gotcha. And you'd make about six of these, and then you'd have lots of other small pieces split, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the eighths, you'd have a few quarters knocking about, and you've got all the different sized pieces of wood for starting a really good fire. Right. Um, so yeah, let's have a little play with them. Um, Making some curls. And there's a few there. If you point it down like this, mm -hmm. I mean this has been documented lots of times by other people. But and then if you make it the the blade uh, horizontal, the curls go straight down, ish. And um, if you lift the point up you get them go to this side. So then you get a broad brush of curls. And you just get more curls on the same stick. More air can get in. You get a more successful fire. This is something I need to practice so much. Yeah. Yeah. If you try and make them really thin and try to keep them to stay on, then you get a, a really good feather stick. I mean, they're never perfect. Curls fall off. And as long as the ground isn't wet, you pick them up, you know, you can use all the curls. There's no there's no drama in lots and lots of curls landing on the floor and gathering up quickly as long as, you know, you're not in a really wet situation. It all works. So the piece of wood's getting wider now, so it's a bit harder to make nice curls that are thin. Right. Um, that's my excuse anyway. <laughs> Always try and um, work on a high spot so you get a, a thin width to your curl. And just keep going until the stick feels like it's going to break in two basically. So I've got still quite a way to go. And sometimes if you lift it off the block it's a bit easier towards the end. So, so far as to say, the knife is up to it then? Definitely. It helps because it's got a slight convex on the blade. It makes mm. better curls than a straight um, flat grind. So at the end, if you can get the thinnest, tiniest curls you can get, and make as many of them as possible, then you can normally get these to light from sparks. So even if your fire lighting equipment is wet, you can still light a fire. 
It works perfectly with the fire steel. These ideally should be a bit thinner. As long as you get plenty of them, it always goes. Yeah, it's fast enough to you actually. And it's um, certainly up to the job for battening. I don't know what it is, what, 4 mil, 5 mil maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So it's got plenty of strength in it. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big Scandinavian knife fan, really, and they normally do the job. There you go. So I could have I could have taken a lot more curls. I could have got you know, but I know that that'll that'll work. I'll I'll do two or three more like that. But um, beautiful. I'll do the job. So what are you doing here? You're going to carve a quick tent peg? Yeah, super, super simple thin one. Um, it's great for just, you know, general purpose tarps. Um, so you just use the forehand grip, which means I'm holding it like this and I'm just working away from me into fresh air. So as long as I can't make any contact with anybody or anything, then it's um, a safe one to use and convenient. There's lots of other cuts you could use. You could use the chest lever, you can mm -hmm. come up like this and do the same thing. That's great if you're in a, you're surrounded by other people. Right. If you can't see very well, you've got your head torch on. Or if you're sitting next to someone you don't like. Yeah. <laughs> so don't um, make them too sharp at the end because that just falls off otherwise. So yeah, seems to do that bit okay. Um, what should we do here? So I put um, just a bevel on the end. So this is like a potato peeler. Mm -hmm. So I can automatically sell the difference between this and a carving knife. So you do get disadvantages for having a slightly convex bevel, but it um, seems to be coping okay. And you know, it's a jack of all trades sort yeah. of blade really. That's what bushcraft knives are, you know. Um, if you want the strength of, um, oh, this is a thumb push. So you just pop it on there and just push with your thumb. It's great for doing the, the bit where the string goes. Tempe. There you go. Yeah. So the moment of truth, Paul, how are we looking? Yeah, let's have a look. Not yeah. bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, it's not too not too burnt really. It's okay. Tap off that extra flour. That's a neat little trick that using the flour. So right into it. Burning. Yeah. Very really good. slow though, that's the big the biggest tip I can give is you know keep your heat you know if you can put your hand over it and it's you know they say five count to five for for cooking in general right. but a little bit less than that is is perfect for bannock really right and um and con you know consistent heat as well so make sure that you can adjust the height of things and and move it around above different areas of the fire but yeah so now i think it calls for a sit down and a taste test would you reckon yeah i reckon so okay so well let's go for it Look at that. It looks delicious. Yeah. Alright, so you ready? Ready? Are you ready? Ooh. So guys, there you go. That is a wrap for this video. It's been a fantastic weekend with my buddy Paul. Learned a lot of skills. As a result, we've also recorded a couple of videos where Paul is teaching you how to make a birch bark knife sheath and another a detailed tutorial on how to carve a cookser. He's a very talented guy, so I've learned a lot of stuff spending a couple of days with him, and hopefully someone you'll be seeing a lot more on my channel. Needless to say, we're putting the link down below to his social media, it will mean a lot to me if you were to go and check him out and give him a follow. Also, a reminder to go and check me out on Instagram too. If you're not following me on Instagram, why? Why? Why are you not following me on Instagram? Check me out on Instagram. I post a lot of stuff on there I don't share anywhere else. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Very casual, very relaxed. It was just our kind of breakfast. We've been very blessed actually to have a couple of days of beautiful weather here in the north of England. If you know anything about the UK weather the past couple of weeks, it's been atrocious with our storms, heavy rains, winds, you name it. Uh, snow as well. So we've been very, very kind of fortunate and very grateful that we've been blessed with two fantastic days. And I hope you enjoyed this video. So I hope whatever you do, you have a blessed day a blessed week ahead 
And as always, this is Zed from Zed Outdoors. Peace out.